Two years ago, I was just a cowboy boot maker building cowboy boots. And then I started my Facebook page, and then my YouTube channel, and then my blog. People began asking me questions, often questions like, where do you get that tool, or where can I buy that leather? I'm always happy to recommend other makers and suppliers, but sometimes the answer was, I don't know, I think I bought the last one. I use a really specific type of skiving knife, but the guy who was making that type of knife doesn't like to make the knives, so I contacted a company and began having them made for myself. I developed a sensitivity to rubber cement, and I found a source for water-based rubber cement, but they didn't have a supplier in the U.S. So I contacted them and asked if I could be their U.S. supplier. The company that I'd been recommending for pedographs decided not to sell pedographs anymore. So I found a source for pedographs and started selling them. And all of us in the U.S. have had a horrible time finding a good source for decent insole leather. So I found a company in England and began importing insole leather. Now if you're noticing a theme here, I think you're onto something. My mother would tell you that one of my first complete sentences was, do it to sells which was my way of saying, I'll do it myself. Okay, so, you know how Mom said that she was going to just go ahead and order thread and sell it to people and do it all by herself because no one else was willing to sell thread. She just do it all by herself. Well, this here is a video of my mom doing this all by herself. And, wow, look, more shocking pink. What a surprise. As a bootmaker, I was trained to use size 33 thread. It gives a delicate and refined look to the decorative work on cowboy boot tops, and it allows you to use a smaller needle. However, finding size 33 thread has become progressively more difficult. But guess what? I've just said I can do that too. See these empty shelves behind me? And now, I have thread all size 33 thread in lots and lots of colors which she got all by herself <laughs> my lovely daughter morgan unpacked all of the boxes all of them obsessively organized them by color color coded and arranged them on my shelves ta-da I started with white and worked my way over into the yellows and oranges and reds and color coded them that way. Then they dropped down and it snakes around. That was mom's idea. But it took a lot of organizing and for a long time the entire area of mom's front gallery was just filled with thread grouped together on the floor so you had to walk through it like it was a minefield to avoid tripping over things. It was a delightful maze and an amusing picture of all of us hopping through thread. And down here we have all of the excess thread. We have lots and lots of pinks. And we have excess pink at the top. So much bright pink. That's in high demand, you know. I've talked about skiving before and I've demonstrated skiving and I've demonstrated skiving knives, but today I'm going to talk about why skiving is important. Skiving is important because it thins the thick edge of a piece of leather. When you join or layer two pieces of leather, you don't want a bump or a ridge where the two pieces of leather meet. You shouldn't have to ask yourself continual questions. Should I wide skive this piece or should I narrow skive it? The answer is if the piece goes on top, it's narrow skived. And if it goes underneath another piece, it's wide skived. This is the top where the beading goes. The beading will go under this piece of leather. So this piece of leather goes on top. That means it's a narrow skive. Anytime you put a piece of leather on top of another piece of leather, the top one must be narrow skived. The reason for this is we're going to be stitching right close to this edge and you always want to stitch through full or almost full thickness of leather. So if it goes on top, it needs a narrow skive. Now at the bottom of this back panel, the bottom of it goes under 
the counter cover. So in that case, we want a wide scythe so that it will seamlessly blend under there. If a piece goes under, you want a wide scythe. If it goes on top, you want a narrow scythe. There's one more thing that I want to talk about while we're discussing scything. Anyone who's ever scythed knows that it can be a difficult thing to learn and to master. It's not easy to get this lovely feather edge at the edge of a piece of leather. So once you get it, don't stack your scythes. If I were going to put this heel slide on, I wouldn't line up the edges. I scythe these to where they're super thin on the edges, and if I stack them right on top of each other, it may be still thin, but it's twice as thick as it was. So when I glue this piece on, I'm going to drop it about an eighth of an inch from the edge, and that way my scythes won't be right on top of each other. And the same thing when I put the back piece on. I'm going to bring it up just a hair. The lining leather is going to stick out about an eighth of an inch. And that way my scythe is still nice and smooth all the way out. I haven't stacked all three scythes right on top of each other to where I've created a bump again just after I finish scything this stuff. It's the same way with beading. I'm going to put a cord in the middle and then when I fold this beading over the cord, I'm not going to have the edges right on top of each other. Instead, I'm going to stagger those edges so that the beading edge will remain nice and thin. Ah! This is the worst program ever. You know what you need? You need a mouse. An actual mouse. This is not a mouse. This is this is a tablet. It's no, no. Every time I click on something, I lose my clip. I've done the same clip like six or seven different times now because it keeps clicking when I don't tell it to click. You need a mouse. A real, actual computer mouse that only clicks when you tell it to click. And I lost my clip again, by the way, by filming this segment. <laughs> I love her passion. So what are you doing? I'm taking the basting out of the zipper so I can try them on. And how, this is time what? This is the third time that I have made this pair of boots. The last two attempts did not fit, so I'm hoping this pair will. <laughs> is it hard to get on? Yeah, this is my swollen ankle. Well, why don't you do the other one first? You need a shoehorn? I don't have one. Well. <laughs> Try this one. If this pair doesn't go on, it is so close that all you need to do is tree them. What does that mean? It's close enough that all we have to do is open that throat, leave it set overnight, and you'll be good. Okay. That's cute. Thank you. I'm going to go look. Okay. So what's the verdict? I think they need work, but they're better than the last two attempts. Well, they're wearable anyway. Mm -hmm. I like them. Very nice. I'm proud. Okay, recording. I am incredibly lucky because my daughter Morgan is on call. What's she on, Mom? <laughs> I am incredibly lucky. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, snicker. <laughs> I am incredibly. <laughs> my name is Morgan, and my poems are moist. <laughs> 